played one of the best games I've seen him play. I thought he was so much better than his final stat line. 19 to 29, 231, no touchdowns, no interceptions, quarterback rating of 89.9. I log every play in a game. The number of dimes that Brock Purdy had on Monday night, and a couple bad throws, a couple of weird throws, one decision that I didn't love, but, I mean, we're nitpicking here. That was a grade-A game from Brock Purdy. The only reason I'm not giving an A-plus, because it was an A-plus is I can't give an A-plus for those numbers, but those numbers did not represent that he was throwing absolute dimes. And I think one thing with him, you see it, is like sometimes he's just making, he's just getting to the rim and making layups. This get to the rim layup, get to the rim layup, get to the rim layup, get to the rim layup. Like it's not some crazy crossover. There's no 360 dunks. But you look up, you're like, this guy just is getting to the rim at will. If this was a basketball game, Brock Purdy got to the rim almost at will against the New York Jets. I mean, I, like, I don't even want to it, – it'd be crazy for me to just read a list of all the dime – all his dimes. It, it would be easier to just point out the throws that weren't dimes because so many of them were. Um you know, I thought the 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 play early in the game, Ayuk had it punched out. It's not a drop. That's a good play by Sauce Gardner. Part of it was they were hand fighting. Ayuk kind of stumbles. And so I think he's a little late getting the hands up. And it he caught the back of the ball, and it made it really susceptible. So he didn't have a great grip on it, and that's why Sauce Gardner was able to pick it out. Um, the, the play that Ayuk did not make in the corner of the end zone, dime, 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 dime. What a throw. I saw, I watched for a big game when I want to, I love, I love Buck and Aikman and I love the man and cast. When I really want to lock in on the game, I got to go Buck and Aikman, which is sad because I got the Mannings and Belichick. So I may have to go back and watch the man and cast, but I did see a clip of Manning saying, get, get, getting kind of angry about IU. He said, get signed, get into camp. We can't drop that ball. I'm telling you, I'm playing prize picks because I'm playing a lot of prize picks. I'm loving it. Want you to jump in on it as well. Support the show. Use my code guy on the prize picks app or prizepicks.com. Click on the link in the description as well. That's the specialty link that'll get you to the right place. And then you can use the code guy. You put in $5, you make a lineup, you immediately get 50 bucks into your account. Just dive in and play all kinds of combinations. I've got uh, some season long lineups. I have multiple lineups going right now in September. Caleb Williams is half a passing yard. Put him in all whatever lineup you got like this one. I've got Tyreek Hill more than half a touchdown receiving or rushing. I've got Dalton Kincaid more than half a touchdown. So I got a little Thursday night and if that hits, I know I'm hitting Caleb over half a passing yard. That's five bucks to pay 45. Right now, code guy at prizepicks.com. Click on the link in the description. Hit that QR code on the screen. Appreciate y'all. Have fun. Second half. Second and ten. Solomon Thomas. It's about to jump on Purdy's back. Purdy steps up, kind of emergency throw to Debo. Juice uh, held up, didn't get a block in the back. And Debo makes a great play out of it. Um, you know, he had a couple. He had a, the throw to Juszczyk that was way too high on second and eight. That was a big miss. He had the throw that was the next throw was too low over the middle to Kittle, who was open. But the Niners uh, got the benefit of a Jets penalty on that play. And then I thought the 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 one thing, like the only thing that he'd probably want back, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff he'd want back, but the only thing that he would obviously want back was it's third down and two, you're in the red zone, and he tries to hit Eric Saubert in double coverage when Jordan Mason is right there for a check down and an easy first down. He's open and he's across the line to gain first down. And, you know, it just made me think about, you remember, I don't know, maybe a month or a month and a half ago, Purdy got a lot of attention because uh, there was some, there was like a quote or a paraphrase by Mike Silver in an article in, in the Chronicle where Purdy, I don't remember the exact quote, but he was like, I want to be more like Brady was basically what he said. And then he went on Tim Kawakami's podcast and he said, well, what I meant by that was I don't like, I don't want to let a team off the hook in a drive when we're moving. Like we have to just, I want to finish more drives. I want to keep more drives going. And to me, that is the, he was talking about that. Like he just picked the wrong time to try to make a play in that spot on third and two. 
he did kind of what he said he didn't want to do, which is just keep the ball, keep the drive going, keep the drive going, keep the drive going. So, okay, that. But then after that was so that was a weird series. He misses two throws and then he makes a bad decision, almost throws a pick, almost cost him three points, definitely cost him the first down. Okay. Well, the next drive he comes back and he looks, he's locked back in. He hits Jennings, who was great today, uh, for a big chunk dime. He hits Debo, perfect spot. 20, like a throw that's not a layup, a throw where you're like, oh, he made all these throws were easy. Like average quarterbacks make a lot of those throws, some of those throws. They don't make the collection of these throws that Brock Purdy made tonight. They just don't. That's, that's your 17th or 25th ranked quarterback. Just don't make them all. They make some of them, but they don't make them all over and over and over and over again. Then he hits that throw, that flat-footed left sideline throw to Ayuk, dime. I was just dime, just on the money after on the money after under on the money, and it it wasn't flashy for the most part. I don't think anybody on Tuesday is going to be talking about Brock Purdy took a next step on Monday night, which he did. I mean, it doesn't work like that. But having watched every throw of this guy's career, like many people watching or listening to this, having seen hundreds of practice throws, that was one of the best games I've seen him play. And it was it was so – because it was so simple. Because it was so simple. Like, that position is so complicated. And when we watch a guy make it look as easy as Brock Purdy made it look, we forget that most guys we watch make it look as hard as it actually is. They make it look complicated. They make it look physically demanding. They make it look mentally overwhelming. They make it look terrifying. And he made it look like none of those things. He was tough. He didn't panic. He was in control. He was accurate. When he made a mistake, when he made a couple bad throws, he came back on the next series and picked up right where he'd left off before the bad throws. He made smart decisions. He's at, he like he was athletic, just the right amount. When it was time to go down and not throw the ball away, take a loss and let time come off the clock on one of his last series, he went down, took the sack. Fine. I want the clock to run. I'm not going to throw it away. He, he several times on Monday, he knew exactly when to give up on the play. So was it mistake free football? No, it, it mistake free. It, it, it almost doesn't exist. Was it perfect? No, it was an a, I mean, it was, it was to me, almost everything you'd want to see when you spend an off season saying, this guy should be getting better, right? First full off season. No injury, time with Kyle. All right, let's see. Let's see what let's see what Salah's got. And then you add to it right before the game. As we learned from Schefter, I'll talk more about McCaffrey in a second. But as we learned from Schefter, it was not that the Niners had deked everybody by pretending McCaffrey was going to play and then he didn't. Uh McCaffrey was going to play. And then he didn't at the last, you know, the last couple of days. So that's not what they were planning for. And it it unfazed. They had some red zone failures. Unfazed. Didn't didn't hurdle up. You know? So there was so much more you would have wanted. I'm sure that he would have wanted. And you, you, they would have loved to have scored 50 points tonight. 48. They could I they could have got 48, maybe. 40, 44, maybe. Um, but total utter control complete control and when you think oh it just looked kind of plain at times it didn't it didn't making it look easy is the skill being consistent throw after throw after throw what do we like to say here right the most invisible superpower is invisibility the second most invisible superpower is consistency and he was that's so that's I mean, would you like the line score to have four touchdowns on it? Sure. I mean, the final, what's the math on 19 and 29? What is that? 60, 
70 percent math guy here big 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 math guy here 66 percent to me that was actually in actuality it was i think it was like i i think it was like 20 I, i'd give them 20 21 at least 21 if not 22 but let's just say conservatively 21 72 percent yeah i mean to me that was a 21 to 29 game he looked awesome. I'm not really sure what else. I, like, man, he's going to have to do it again next week and blah, 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 blah. But to lose McCaffrey, to not have had much time with Ayuk, to not have had any time with Trent. I well, he No, the other one, you know what? There's another one he'd like back. He completed a five-yard ball to Kittle, which was good for my prize picks team. And Juszczyk was getting WAO wide-ass open down the right sideline. So he'd want that one back, but excellent, excellent. Put put me down for an A. I'm gonna, I might have to try and keep track of my Purdy grades this year. Put you down for an A grade for Brock Purdy. Hell hell of a game, hell of a game. It it, it I I'm telling you this right now. Brock Purdy was better on Monday night than people are gonna say that he was on Tuesday. And that's not because there's haters. I just mean. Having watched him, I was sitting here thinking, I'm, am I crazy? Or is this one of the best games I've ever seen him play? And I've decided on this one, I'm just going to trust my gut and say it was the best games, one of the best games I've ever seen him play.